Hey everyone, this is Structural Steve again, and in this video I'm going to show you how to model a deck in OpenBridge Modeler. I'm going to cover the Place Deck tool, talk about creating custom templates versus modifying existing ones, cover controlling the deck with variable constraints versus point control, and explain the significance of the working point in deck templates. So when it comes to modeling bridge decks in OBM, there are two workflows you can choose from. The first one is just to take an existing library deck template, use it in your model, and adjust the variable constraints as needed in order to make what you need in the project. And if you don't know what variable constraints are, they're just parametric variables that are built into the library templates that allow you to control different aspects of the template, such as deck thickness, cross slope, or even deck width. The second workflow for modeling a deck would be to go into the deck library and create a new template for your job. This usually involves making a copy of an existing one and changing the default values of the variable constraints to fit your job. So what are the advantages or disadvantages of each method? Well, if you choose to take an existing template and just modify the variable constraints as you go, you'll have to do that each time you place the deck. So if your bridge has a lot of different units and you're going to be placing a lot of different decks, you'll have to adjust those variable constraints you know, a lot of times, which can be kind of a pain. And you'd probably be better off just creating a library template where the defaults are what you need. However, if you just have a single deck bridge, then using the default template and modifying the variable constraints afterwards you know, works just fine. Now one thing to note about the two different workflows is how they affect the input echo report. When you make your own deck template in the library with the default values being what you need, when you go to print your input echo report for the deck, it'll only show you what template you used in the model. It will not show you what your default values are. Therefore, you'd have to take some screenshots of the deck template default values and put them into the report manually so that they can be checked. If you went the other route and took an existing template and just modified the variable constraints to suit your needs, the variable constraint values would show up in the input echo report, making it easier for QC. Now this is something that's likely to change down the road, so it's just something to keep an eye on. Now I'll be showing you both workflows in this video so that we cover all of our bases. We will start off by taking an existing template and modifying its variable constraints. So in this particular bridge, I have four spans with an approach slab at the beginning and the end of the bridge. Now one important thing to note here is that I have my approach slabs on their own units. If you don't do this, you may have issues when you go to print your finished grade elevations where you get additional or duplicate data in those reports. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the unit we're working on is the active unit. In this case, that would be the begin approach slab unit here. So I need to make sure that that's the active unit. Let's go to my explorer. It's not, so I'm just going to go ahead and right click on that and say set active. And then I'm going to go make sure I'm in the OpenBridge Modeler workflow here. Go over to the place deck tool inside the superstructure tab here and click on that. You want to take a look at these default values you have over here and make sure that those are all working in the way you want them to work. In my case here, all those are fine. You know, I don't, as I don't want any station or vertical or horizontal offsets here. So all these default values of zero are just fine for me. And also one important thing here is I want to make sure that I have this add constraints uh, checked here because I'm going to need to modify some of those variable constraints for this template. Then from here, I can go ahead and place my first, or select my first support line for the deck. And if you're ever wondering what you need to do next in a, in a tool in terms of the operation, you, know, you can always look next to your cursor. You should always have like a little floating box next to there that says what you need to do. Or you can look down on the bottom left here and it'll tell you what you need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and select just a, a default template here. The slab with constraints is a pretty good one that works for most cases. I'll zoom in. I'll select my first pier line. Second one. And then I'll data click or left click to accept. Then you'll see the variable constraint dialog open up here. Now from here you can see all the variable constraints that you're able to modify on the left side here. The default values from the library template are shown here as well in the default column. Now I'm going to go ahead and check each one that I want to modify and then click the little plus sign next to each one to add the field to vary that constraint. I'm just going to go and check all these ones. And then one other thing you need to do is hit the little plus sign to add a, a field that you're going to vary those constraints in. So I'll do that for each one as well. Now one thing to note is you can add more than one field if you need to. And the scenario where you would need to do this and add more than just one field here would be when you may have some complicated super elevation transition or, or deck width transition that requires you know more than just one line to define how that that super elevation is transitioning or how that deck width is transitioning. But in my case with this bridge, you know, I only need one line, one variable constraint for each one of these variables to do what I need to do. 
Now you notice a lot of different ways you can modify the location of these variations and how they start and end. Um, you now you have different support types. You can do the support line, ratio by span station, specific station. You know, most of the time I'll just leave these as support line and if I need a, a relative location to that support line then I'll put that in here. And that's kind of how you tweak these start and end distances here just by playing with the relative location and then the location types if you need to. But again for this project, you know, all these defaults look good to me so I'm just going to go ahead and start from the top here my list and work my way down in terms of modifying these variable constraints. So this first one here, the left slope lane, I'm going to go ahead and adjust that to negative 8.03%. And also that's probably a good time to stop and kind of talk about the working point in these templates. So this left slope lane 1 here is just going to be the slope of the deck from the working point to the left side here, the left coping. And the working point uh, is important to note that this is going to be your alignment. So the working point is always going to be wherever your alignment falls at on the cross section of your deck here. And this will always be indicated by this WP here. Now we haven't adjusted all of our variables yet so that's why this one still looks like the default template here but once I'm done modifying all these variables then we'll see what our deck looks like in, in this job. Next one is going to be the left width lane. This is going to be just the distance, the horizontal distance from the working point or the alignment to the left coping over here. Same thing on the right side. Right width. and thickness is going to be your deck thickness in the negative direction. So remember this is always starting from the alignment which is the top of our deck so we need to go down to get that thickness. That's going to be negative whatever your actual deck thickness value is. In my case here it's negative eight and a half inches. So these all look good. Again these are going to be the actual values. The default values you can still see in here if you ever wanted to see those and I'm just going to hit OK. And now we see our deck over here. And now, now that I did that, I actually just realized that my this is the approach slab, which is going to be a different deck thickness than my, my main span decks here. So the approach slab in this job is a foot thick, so I need to go back in there and modify that. So if you ever need to do that, you can just click on the deck, open up your properties, and go into variable constraints here, and click this little dot 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 symbol here. So I'm going to go back to my thickness, and I'm going to change that to negative 1. It's important to note that these, these units are in feet here, so just negative 1 is going to be negative 1 foot, or negative 12 inches. And that looks a little bit better there. So that's one way we can go about modeling our deck. Now let's take a look at creating a custom deck template and using that. We'll start off by going into the Utilities tab under Libraries and click on Decks. From here, we're just going to expand the standard templates, go into Dex Labs, and click on one that I'm just going to start working from. So in this case, the slab with constraints. I'm going to right click on that, copy, and you'll see I got a copy of it right here. And the first thing I'll do is usually just rename that one to whatever I need it to be. In this case, I'll just call it test. And now we can go ahead and start modifying the variables in this deck template. So anywhere inside this box here, this, var this point box where you see a variable with a name, you know that's going to be a defined variable. So this first point, point one, which is going to be our right coping point up here, has two variables. It has a right lane width and a right lane slope. And those variables are shown down here in what they are. So you can rename these if you wanted to or choose uh, some already existing ones if you needed to as well. In my case here, I'm just going to go ahead and update these to what they are. So my right lane width was 15 feet and my right slope was negative 0.0803. That looks good, and I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to go to the next point, point 0.2. The only variable here is the thickness. So that's going to be negative 0 0.070823. Save. And let's go ahead and, now that I've already defined that one, oops, it didn't work here, so same thing, negative 0 0.070833. 
use it again, so I'm going to copy that, save, save that one. Actually, something doesn't look right here. It looks like I was off by a decimal point in my, my thickness here, so let me go back and fix those. That's actually negative point seven oh eight three three. Now let's go ahead and copy that. Save. That's one good way, one good thing about doing these templates like this is you can see right away if something is messed up with your values. So the last one here is 0.5, my left coping line. Let me go ahead and put it in there. I think 35.5. And my slope was the negative 0.0803. Save that. And that looks good. So that looks pretty close to what uh, my actual deck template is here. So I'm just going to go ahead and close. I remember we were saving as we were modifying it. So there's no, you don't have to save it at the end. Everything's already saved under this test template. So I'll click close. And I'll go back to the home tab. Place deck. I'm going to go ahead and select that template I just created. Just test. Hit select and everything looks good. I don't need to add any variable constraints, so I can uncheck that box. And actually, one important thing to do, which I forgot to do, was to make sure I'm in the correct unit, which I'm not. So I need to go ahead and activate that unit one, which is going to be where my span one is. So I'll set that active and go ahead and place that deck now. Same thing, test template. Don't need to add any constraints because we already did those in our library template. Select the first line, the last line. And bam, there you go. So now the nice thing about this is I don't have to go in there and add any kind of variable constraints or modify anything. You know, I already did that once in my library, and I can just reuse that over and over again here. Now for this bridge, spans two and three will have the same deck dimensions as well, except for the thickness, which will be nine inches instead of eight, instead of eight and a half inches. But at least with this template, you know, I won't I'll only have to modify that one variable instead of all those variable constraints. So before I go ahead and knock out the rest of my decks, I'll talk a little bit about point control. So point control is a different way we control our deck geometry and is extremely useful when you have some complex scenarios such as some gore areas in a bridge or cases where the deck is being driven vertically by one alignment and horizontally by a different alignment. Now before you can use point control to drive your deck geometry, you'll need to create what are called auxiliary alignments, which are simply just lines that you want certain points of your deck template to follow. One important thing to note about auxiliary alignments is that they need to be created using the civil line work tools, which can be found here in the civil tab. So this is where you can create your horizontal curves and lines and your vertical ones. Now, if you were just to simply use the normal smart line tool here, those wouldn't work for the auxiliary alignments. They have to be done with these civil tools here, these civil horizontal vertical geometry tools. So one thing to note, it is a good habit to create these auxiliary lines in a, a separate file and just reference them into your OVM model when you need them. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this point control looks like and how we would use it. So you start off by modeling your deck as you normally would and just make sure you have the variable constraints turned on. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the next unit here. Place deck, make sure my variable constraints are turned on. Select the first one, and in this case the last one, this is a two-span single continuous deck. And once you get to this window, instead of variable constraints, you're going to select point control. And then from here, you're just going to select whichever points you want to drive with those auxiliary alignments. In this case, you know, point 0.5 is probably a common one because that's a left coping line. So I'm going to select that and say what it is that I want to control about that point. Do I want to control just the horizontal, just the vertical, or both? In this case, I'll just say horizontal. And then I'm going to hit OK, and then it'll prompt me to select which path I want that point to follow. So I'll select the point, hit select, and at this point if I had an auxiliary alignment in here that I referenced then, I would go ahead and select that, hit OK, and then that geometry would be driven with that point. So you just go through and you just do that with all the points you need to be driven with those point controls, and that's just you know an alternative way to drive that deck geometry in some more complex scenarios as opposed to using those variable constraints. Now I'll go ahead and just knock out the rest of my decks here with the traditional variable constraint method and the deck template that I had already created.
and there you go that's it now we got all our decks modeled in here and we're good to go and move on to the next step so you should have a good understanding of the different ways in which you can model decks in OBM at this point. You know, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button you see below on the screen now. Give the video a like and share it with others. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section and I'll do my best to respond to them. See you guys in the next video.